Good evening, everybody. We're just about to get started here. Strap yourselves in for the first round of the Fanatec GT Challenge. This promises to be a spicy one. Welcome everybody to the iRacing Fanatec GT Challenge here at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. It is round one for season four of 2020. Are you ready for some memes? Because I sure am. Get your memes out in the chat. As we see. And as we participate in the second full season of the iRacing Fanatec GT Challenge broadcasting here live on Radeon TV, on YouTube, and on Twitter. Sorry, not on Twitter. On Twitch. Imagine if we did broadcast on Twitch. Imagine if Twitch did have that. As always, you're all very welcome. Broadcasters today are myself, as always, Robert O'Brien. And, uh, of course... Craig King joins us all the way from the hearty days of, well, over there called England. How are you, Craig? How are you? Bonsoir, Rob. Bonsoir, everybody. I'm doing fine, thank you. Looking forward to hearing the raspy noises of that Corvette GT1 mixed in with some De Martins and maybe some, uh, some Fords, which... Uh, haven't had changes yet there's a placebo and people think there are changes because it feels different it's that makes sense welcome to iRacing where a little a little thing could be a placebo but 
we've only got four forts today, and uh, that will be 30, what, 31, I think, that means 30 or 31 GT1s, so it'll be a massive feel for the GT1s, but all of our favourites are around, it's great to see the um, VC guys back again, as well as some new people, the FTR is back as well, so Merrick Blom is there, we've got uh, Thomas Dedier, we've got uh, Razan Ohora, Stefan Walker, we've got Belorgi, uh, Ethan Bass as well, Blanking Ship, Stefan Overgaard, and of course we cannot forget the man in the spicy Dorito car that is Dan Muller. Oh, is he selling this spicy meme car? It just actually still disappeared off my the... screens. Yep, still in. Still in the Dorito car. Somebody sitting Hot in a pit. Spicy. Damien Duvaux. Now, I think, yeah, I, I am correct in saying that neither of us have raced or I've raced it you haven't and neither of us nope. have broadcasted it and neither of us nope uh well <laughs> I, I've at least got racing experience around here and let me tell you let me tell you um that hairpin uh otherwise known as uh le ping it's um uh it's 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 oof it's oof and especially around with these um, big old uh, meme cars, the uh, the four GT GT twos. Um, I I hazard a guess it's going to be a bit of a nightmare. And when I say yeah. nightmare, I mean a true nightmare. As in, like you're gonna have to be very patient as the uh, as the boat comes around the harbor, kind yeah, of way. You got to be careful. Everyone, everyone knows turn one and turn two, the entrance into Villa Sena, then down into the little chicane there at three and four, around the section into what would be section two on an F1 track into five, six, and seven. A little bit of acceleration before you hit another chicane of eight and nine, down into the hairpin, and it's pretty much straight on after that. But those hairpins can catch everybody out, and what will catch people out, I think, is the wall of champions. But qualifying. I believe is over. I don't think there's anybody else out there setting a time. Just a couple in the back. There's a minute yeah, left. Uh, there's a minute left. Oh, we might as well get some of well, the qualifying. 40 seconds left. Okay, well, uh, let's get let's, let's let's start with the well. Well, we've already started with the race. Let's get started with the qualifying results themselves. It is. Uh, I keep I called him Alex. Uh, I think I called him by accident, Alex Blom, by accident. Oh dear. Oh dear. I, I, I remember distinctly. I did that by accident. I'm sorry. It's uh, <laughs> Emirik Blom with a one thirty one eight two zero is good enough for pole position. Uh, Jeremy. Ho oh no, sorry, Jeremy Hope didn't get second place. He got third. Stefan Overgaard pipped into the post just there with a one thirty two two zero one in the car number one. And Hop will have to settle for third position with a one thirty-two six or two sixty-four. Matthews with a one thirty-two three one eight. Marquet with or Mark with a one thirty-two three one nine. Reithmuller with a one thirty-two five three three for sixth position. Devoe with a one thirty-two seven nine two. Dan Muller with a one thirty-two seven nine four. So only two thousands of a second separate seven and eight. Uh, Munier with a 132.805. Go to Frey with a 132.938. That rounds off your top 10. Going down the list, it's Ferrier with a 132.996. Carthro with a 133.040. Fromont with a 133.137. Razanahora with a 133.323. Is good enough for 14th position. Stefan Warcup with a 133.363. Moraine with a 133.953. Balorgi uh, with a 134.064. So getting into the 134s now. Asunol with a 134.085 is good enough for 18th position. 19th is Roy with a 134.223. In 20th is Ingle with a 134.274. Leslie with a 134.613. Henry the 7th. With a one thirty four six three three, 
And in 23rd is Williams with a 135.690. Ali with a 136.1 one flat puts him into 24th position. In 25th is Bayana with a 137.580. And Palio with a 137.704. And that's all that qualified for the GT ones. Yeah, then we've got Elaine Magan, uh, Jack Kowalski, David Hudson, Raul Gonzalez. They are all non qualifiers in the GT1s. For GT2s, we mentioned them Ethan Bass, a 136.038, will take the pole. Mark Stanbridge, a 136.190 in second. Roberto Di Filippis, a 140.131. And Thomas Blankenship did not set a qualifying time. Uh, I think he is out there. He is out there. So yes, I think everybody, yeah, everybody that is in the split is here. There are no non-starters as they are starting the procession. Now I'm going to check that they're down the, almost the water straight, as I call it, the casino, uh, the uh, casino straight, the uh, Duit Casino, coming around the final corner right now. But we will start 30 minutes now of. Tech GT1 starts now. Blum will just blow straight away. overgard has got nowhere to go. He's just going to be following him at the same time. Matthews has taken an early P3 with Hops right behind him. It looks like the lead at the moment is Blum and Overguard. There won't be anything going into the center essence. We'll look at the back right now. And Matthews holds on to that P3 hop, trying to fight on, but can't oh, get anything. Sebastian. And someone off. Yeah, Reithmuller having a mistake coming into the center essence. He is now going down the pecking order and he'll be going down continuously up until the rest of the field passes him by. Does he join safely? Oh, there's been another accident. That is Gishtap Ali. Sorry, just one second. Let's have a look at what happened just very quickly while we have the cameras on them at the back. This was car number 28 trying to navigate through and he hits the rear rear right of the car number 32 of Gestep Ali that's Jack uh, Kulikowski that hit his rear end but uh, Rob, no Hop's real. gone off Hop's gone off sorry Hop's gone off at one of the chicanes having to take a slow down he is now down into P, P9 he's lost more space now he's 10th as they hit the chicane right there he went off at the, uh, the not the head, but the chicane, the head in there. Going wide again. Now Goodafoy's going to get by him. It's not been a good start for Hop. They're going to be side by side coming out of the hairpin. We're trying not to hit each other and keeping it safe. The nodes in the front will be Goodafoy as they will come down into the wall, into the chicane, 13 and 14 into the wall of champions. We'll keep on the eye on this with the fat and Hop just decides I'm not going to take this. But it looks like there's been a lot of breaking up ahead. But your leaders at the moment is Blom, a second and a half ahead of Overguard with Marquez and Matthews. And Matthews looks like he might make a, make a move. Here, just clipped the grass, trying to get getting ready to go into the Vero's center. So he will just hold on it in P4 at the moment. Meanwhile, in the GT2s, Stanbridge had a bad start, went to the back. He's replayed, he's managed to gain one spot. Blankenship is now in the air at the back. It's Bass, Felipez, and Stanbridge is your top three for the balls. We'll try and keep an eye on them. Not much happening, but it well, looks it, like Stan Stanbridge will might. He's, he's only 0.4 of a second behind Roberto de Filippis. Oh, I'm, I murdered his name, didn't I? Uh, yeah. Gloss over that. It, it's going to be difficult to try and quantify the Fords because, you know, as soon as one makes a mistake, we've seen it before where they just they start spreading out. And once it or well, if the GT1 traffic catches up to them that will be interesting to see how that breaks up we've had lap we've had slow gt1 tracking mix and mingle with these guys and they've had well a fair few issues if uh, if we're being uh, completely 100 percent transparent about it there's been a few issues um but today it doesn't seem that there are any. They're racing on their own little section of the track, and they seem to be happy about it. And they're doing well, keeping it together. Now, Ethan Bass is pulling away. He's two and a half seconds ahead of Philippus and Stanbridge. But Stanbridge is looking to see if he can get past and into second place. Yeah, while that was happening, Goodaf uh, Hop managed to take back that position on Goodafroy. The exact same way Goodafroy did it to him the lap before, going through the hairpin. And then on the back on the back straight, he just had the speed, keeping an eye on those GTEs. What can Stanbridge do? Not much at the moment. He will have the switching coming down the 
casino straight so let's keep an eye on this right now they've got the water to the left they've got the trees and of course the casino to their right the Stanbridge want to make a move it's gonna be risky he breaks very early these cars are not very good on brakes and I don't think that's a corner you want to be trying and sending it so Stanbridge decides to break a little bit earlier it's slowing fast out that has helped him when they cross the line he will still be p3 but if he gets a good line here into and Felipe's has just braked he He's accepted it and he's let Stanbridge just go through. So Stanbridge back up into second where he started at the at start of the race. Yeah, but there's a lot of risk though because if he, <clears throat> if uh, Stanbridge keeps that inside line, but he doesn't break enough to um, retake the racing line once the uh, once he's coming through the actual main section of the center chicane, he actually can go wide and that allow that will allow the kind of a 19 just to slip in. And th he, th there he goes. That is. The risk that I was explaining, or trying to explain, if he overextended himself, he'd have an issue, and he does have an issue now. Uh, the kind of a 19 of Philippus will try and see if he can sneak back of his position of second place. Stambridge does make it back on track and stays ahead, but he is now concertine the, the three cars, the two cars behind him, into a three horse race. But it's a three horse race for second place because. Well, Ethan Bass is just, he's just, he's just going, and he's going. He, he is a man of his own. We'll keep on on that. Matthews took P3 away from Marquez in the GT1 battle. Blom went purple with a 132-344. Literally, do you want to know how close it was? Oh, a thousandth of a second. One thousandth of a second. Thank you for ruining my hype moment there. <laughs> One thousandth of a second between Overgod and Blom. That is how fast these guys are at the moment. They're re they are really strong on these cards. But meanwhile, at the back, Dan Muller's still trying to look like he's yeah, he to just, make a move. Yeah, he just went... They turn 8 and 9. That chicane. He actually went wide in the second part. I was surprised. He didn't get a slowdown because he did... He cut it quite hard. Um, But he, in the Doritos Power number 4, looking to see if he can, if he can shake it up. He started in 8th and he's made two positions up so far so he'll be looking to see if he can continue good form and continue getting places his next target will be Damien DeVoe um, by the way does, is it just me or is the car number 17 and the car number 11 looking awfully like the car of Felipe Paiva he's not racing today shame uh, we just oh, the Hexer. It looks like the Hexer racer. Yeah, the, the Hexer racer. By the way, Muller, we were thinking about Muller is trying to get onto Duval. At the moment, he's having to defend himself from Minia, uh, which is a bit of a struggle right now because the slipstream, you know, a lot of slipstream in these cars, but you still get these long straights, and then you come into these these twisty sections it, around, around the second section of the track, and Muller is trying to catch onto Duval. And he did have a faster lap by... Uh, no, he had a slower lap last lap, sorry. But uh, Minier did have a faster lap than Muller by two tenths of a second. So Muller wants to be looking forward into the top five. He's having to defend P6 at the moment. The gap is just under half a second between Minier and Muller as they hit another chicane. And he's coming up to the hairpin. That's a wide... Ooh, that's a, almost a cut there from Muller. But no, no cut given. It almost looked like he went on the grass there. What can he do into this hairpin? Will there be any scent? No. Many are decides against it. Now, if he gets a good exit, we might see a move at the, at the end of this strike. We'll wait and see. He's gone a little bit wide. He's not got the, on the, he's not got the accelerator fast enough, I don't think. I don't think Many has got a chance at this now. No, so the 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 way that you're explaining it was that Dan Muller was slower last time. He was, but there was an explanation. It was that mistake that he made in turn nine. When he was coming down towards the hairpin, he actually cut it quite harshly. He cut the corner quite harshly, and he actually made a mistake. And he had to, you know, he had to check up, as they would say in NASCAR. He had to check up the car and essentially try and just correct it and get it back on track because he was essentially off track. Um, and I thought he had actually gotten himself a slowdown, but he did not. So, you know, he, he did very well to avoid, well, more so luck than, you know, pure skill, but... You know, he's very lucky to avoid it, and um, the charge is back on. And the charge is ba is on for P1. Stefan Overgaard was faster by two and a half tenths of a second over uh, Amirik Blom. This is the shouty boy 
versus the VEC Sim Racing of uh, Lom, car number two versus the car number one. It's, it, it's shaping up to be a nice little duel for first position. And um, it means that... Just as you said that, though, is that a wide line there from Overguard? That would almost be, like I say, in America, as a, the car got a bit tight there. Looked very, did not look smooth going through that hairpin. Lost a small amount of time there onto Vlom, but is catching up. We've got Viana, by the way. Viana was in the pits, did not see what happened there as well. Belorgi had a spin, keeping an eye on this lead. On that straight, just with that slipstream, he's gained three tenths of a second. They avoid the wall of champions. Keeps on going. Well, look at the tides. I did think Overgar was a little bit slower that lap with that hairpin. Uh, it does not show. He's still two tenths of a second faster than Blom, and he is catching, like you were saying. And this Corvette really is showing its worth at the moment. It's just got a lot of grip at the moment. It's enjoying itself out there. Comes around the Viros to center, doing really well. Comes now into this first cane, does well, holds on there. He is gaining on Blom every time he goes through one of these chicanes. He will come down now into six and seven, which is sort of a chicane, sort of an S. And he is he lost a little bit of time, but holding on now. And then they'll go Dally. They'll hit eight and nine. Another set of S's slash the canes. But hold on to it. And the gap is closing. Now, do I think there's going to be a move at the hairpin? I think he'll wait. I think with the way the hairpin is, with how wide it is, and how treacherous it is to make a move, he might just set himself up for turn 13 and 14 at the end of the lap. Because I cannot see. And yet, as I was thinking. He decides not to, and he takes a different line than Blom. Did you notice that Blom was hugging that apex? I don't know if that was on purpose from Overguard or not, but he just decided to stay in the middle of the track, not use the apex, just go around on his own way. Has helped him. Hasn't lost any time on it. He is catching. Now, this will be... It'll be paramount to see how, how the feng shui happens, because he'll need to... He will need to set up his car in such a way that he can actually make it happen and then keep it. Because if he if he tries to defend it coming up towards the chicane at the Wall of Champions, that will end in tears. Um, there's, there's absolutely no doubt about that. He will try and keep the car... You know, the move will have to be made either at the hairpin or he'll have to make the move essentially at a point where... It doesn't really matter what Blom does because he'll have secured it for that section of the lap coming up to the line. And he is he's snaking around the rear end of Blom and he's getting you know, he's 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 within just within the range that he can actually make a move. But he will he'll need to time it because if he makes a mistake, this is like the Nurburgring. ring, you see those walls, see those marks on the walls? Yeah, you will become the next, the next, uh, well, we, 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 I'd say a pothole, but it's not a pothole, it's against the wall. You become the, the, the next, the next hole in the wall if you make a mistake, especially on the inroad of the circuit between turn five and nine. If you make a mistake, there's a wall ready to greet you and um, give you a nice little set, section of damage. And I'll tell you, in front of Blom right now, I was just seeing it from Overguard's perspective. He can see cars in front of him. Five seconds away from these two in the lead are the GT1s and a very, and a slower, slower final corner there for Blom. Overguard had a bad middle sector on that lap, has managed to gain some of that time back with a bad exit there from Blom. And really close now, and really trying to force it in right now as Overguard trying to do what he can. The gap now between Blom and the next GT2 is three seconds. That is going to be crucial because they don't want to get held up coming through these these buses, coming through these chicanes at the moment. They've come out of three and four fine. Comes through five, okay. Gap is still under half a second. And Blanc can see it. And I, I bet he's hoping if I can just get to them at the hairpin or just after, it would be great. But if I can get to one of them beforehand, I might ruin this battle for P3 between Deep Leafers and Blankenship. But I'll have a bookmark. And I think that's what he looks for right now. The gap is closing to the GT2s. This is crucial. We do not see GT2 traffic like this early in a race. We are today. And Blankenship decides he's not going to take the fight off of Felipez. He lets both of these through. Now, what will Felipez do? He lets them both through. No, actually, Overguard, I think he might be a bit compromised there on his exit. 
are you talking? You referring about oh, Stefan Overgaard trying yeah, to? Yeah, I think he was a little bit. Yeah, I think he was a little bit compromised on his exit because Felipe has took the outside line, which is the line that a lot of the cars, a lot of the GT cars, like to use around that hairpin. That's why it's so much, so wide over there. He has, you know, he had to just hold off there. So interesting to see. I must be honest. Now, Dealey Viana. Is that, oh, he's at the moment. Oh, okay. Uh, well, he's just had his two seconds of fame. Anyway, back to it. Back to the rest of the field. It back is. To the rest of the field. Dan it, Muller, by the way. Dan Muller's always going to move on Devras, just to say. They've closed up, and there's a gaggle here for fifth, sixth, and seventh. Sorry to interrupt. That's Devra, Muller, and Carthrell. So these three now, there's less than a second between the three of them as they come around the Vero Senna. And it's actually all three Aston Martins as well. So. It's uh, it's the Hexa versus the FTR versus one spicy boy in a Dorito. <laughs> so we're going to call the Aston Martins the one spicy boy. And, no, 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 uh, they're just Dan Muller because it's Dorito. Fair enough. So, but you know, we call we call the Corvette the Shouty Boy. What do we call the the Aston Martins? We just call them the the, the Sleek Boy. Well, I, I say, old sir, I don't think you insult any anything from Britain. The Aston Martins are a fantastic piece of machinery. We don't call it a stupid name. We call it a woman and we have fun with her. She is a fantastic machine. I, I've got Ooh. nothing. Oh, oh, no. Oh, and there's been, oh, and there's been contact with Mo. Muller tapped the back of Felipe's, but who is that going fly? Was that, that was Richard Carthraw. Yeah, he made a mistake. He overextended himself. He was looking to see if he can go on the inside. And then you just see literally literally holding holding the wheel for dear life i think <laughs> i think he was because he was looking on the inside of um i think that was damien devoe he was looking on the inside of because dan muller was also looking to see if he could have a little um a little go at it it didn't happen but what had what it had essentially transpired was you know, he tried to go on on the inside. The door was closing. He, there, well, it was closing very slowly, so he could he could get a gap if he wanted to. But at the very moment that he was, no, there's oh, no accident. No, no, no. That is Deval Viana. Hulk's got involved. That's I think Carpool's got involved as well. I'm not entirely sure. It's Philippe involved. Sorry, I think. I, what has happened there? See on board with Dan Muller. That is the lapped car of. Oh. Okay, yeah, that's uh as Phil would say, that's a lot of damage. Wow, that is a lot of damage, and that's four cars because I think Jeremy Hop also got touched by that, making their way up the field, and yeah, they're losing time right now. And yeah, Hop's car at the front of that is very oh. well. What? What? I think the the car thirty one just brake checked. What? I don't. I don't know. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say anything there. I'm not sure. That would be a shame, but I, I'm. Just, I'm not sure. Let me just get the like. This is the rear view that he has. He's yeah, actually, I, I'm not saying anything. Just have a look at this. We'll leave. We'll leave it to the viewers to try and see what. Yeah, he just broke on the racing line. Yeah. But I'm 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 give, I'm being honest right now. That that was that was that was his fault. This uh, car 31, Daily Daily Vienna, he brake brake checked on the line and he's caused that accident. Yeah, I I, I thought it was a GT2 at first. I wasn't looking properly, and I thought, well, I thought benefit the doubt. Maybe the GT2 just needs to have a little bit of take the bit of speed off for that little section. But no, no, it was a definite GT1, um, and that has taken a few people out there. Uh, Dan Muller is in the pits. Damien uh, Devote is in the pits. Uh, David Hudson is in the pits. Uh, Dan Muller had a black and orange flag he had a meatball flag um and he needs to come into the pits for repairs and i think he's gonna be in there for a few minutes because his steering wheel was not straight now mentor has has retired by the way mentor has retired 
Yeah, Munier, uh, Munier has also retired. Uh, Gonzalez has retired. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's another good situation. Anyways, side by side. Sorry, side by side. Coming out the hairpin. By the way, it's gonna throw in Morian and Stefan walk up decided he wants some. The Corvette. Look at the Corvette speed. He's just gone past both of them. Before. Can he get the turn in? Can he? Get it! Oh, he gets it turned in, but he loses the position to Gunnafroy. He just decided he was going to use the power of that Corvette with a bit more top end speed to try and make the move. And now he's on the defense. Morian wants to make a move down into the center. But as center. Cannot make it. Over goes over the bump and has to go wide. No! Oh, it's just a spin then for Walkup. Walkup has spun. I think he's done that on his own accord. I'm not sure. Might have touched. Just showing the replay of the move that he made going into the wall of champion chicane. Um, I think that he was very brave. Yeah, he uh, unfortunately he he sp he's been on his own. I think he just locked the brakes too hard. It was a very brave move, and he did give the space. But I mean, it's it's that last chicane is literally it's it's either single file or dead, nothing else. Um, so the fact that he. tried I mean, he's very brave, and he did give the space, but um, maybe in, uh, with hindsight, probably not the best idea. Hindsight 2020. Razan Ahura, because of that, has lost a couple spots. He is now what, P9, and in a, in a battle with Gutafroy again, uh, holding on as much as he can. This would be for 9th and 10th. Uh, probably the only, one of the major battles happening at the moment this day. What about Fromont? Fromont. He, he managed to recover Ooh, every time they come around the wall of champions i think they're gonna hit somebody and they just get away with it but here's the one we want to see p the battle for p5 the battle for that important stat that everybody wants on iRacing the p5 very aaron carfro less than half a second carfro had a chance to make him move into turn one could not make it and is now just playing that waiting game which i think everybody does is just just play the waiting game around here yeah carthro he made a mistake, but he's 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 recovered, which is good. But um, yeah, he needs he needs to he needs to check up on the hairpin before he. Now you know, if it happens once, then obviously of course you, it's you just chuck it up and you move on. But if you make it again, it's kind of like you, you you'd be disappointed with yourself. It's just like I've I've made the mistake once, I've made it again. Am, am I terrible? And it's like no, it's just you just need to you need to shape up. You better it's shape up. Cause I need a man. I, I, yeah, sorry. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> well, he has not gone off at the hairpin. Has managed to keep it going. He's lost a little bit of time to ferry her. Uh, and of course, being ferry is in a Corvette. Well, we just saw. Uh, we, we just saw um, walk up with the Corvette. Just go full power down that straight. So. I don't think Carthor will be able to have the top speed here, but holding on, gap is still half a second. We're down to eight minutes left in the race. We're starting what, lap 15. We're on lap 15. We're going to having 20 laps. So we've got six laps to go. And Carthor again. And I've seen this a lot, especially with Blom and Overgaard at the start. Is they have a Ooh. they almost have the touch there. Is they, they they have a chance coming down into Virar to center, but then there's nowhere else for them to go. These chicanes are too tight for them to make a move. Then it's the hairpin, and then it's the straight. And you're not going to make a move on the Wall of Champions. It's too narrow. So there's only a couple places that these GT1s can really think about making a move. Yeah, and it and it has to be in a very specific place. As you see, Mark Stanbridge is now in the pits. What happened to him? He's coming down towards turn six to seven. He goes wide. Oh, has a spin. And he toes, so there's no damage. You just spin, and uh, he just toes. He didn't want to. He didn't want to sit there. Essentially, that's weird because he had a P2. He had a P3. Sorry. Um, I, I don't think he would. I think he was just like I. I don't want to. I don't want to be sat in the middle when everybody's gonna come around. He's he's left. He's left. He he he's retired. Full stop. Oh what? Yeah. That's what I mean. With the damage to Felipe's car. He, he would have stayed in and would have got a pe would have got a podium. Yeah, but yeah, odd. Yeah, that's really right. odd, actually. Yeah, that is really odd. By the way, Carfroy, the closest he's been to Ferrier all race, point two of a second. 
Now it's gone to point three to come down to the start finish line. He might want to make a move in a turn one here. What will he decide to do? He is trying to catch, but the gap is still too big. Gap is still too big. And will he go for it? Will he try and go for it? Oh, it's a nice line, but he's compromised there. Had a really nice line into the Veros center, but was compromised at the line that Ferrier was taking. If Ferrier wasn't there, that would have been a really nice fast line, but could not make it. And now again. He's just on the back and there's no point fuel saving around here because there's no pit stops. He's right up to the bumper now. I don't think there's any way he can go. Looks to me, he's asking the questions. That's what he's doing. He's not looking to make a move. He's asking the questions. What can Ferrier do? Can he be prepared if the guy decides that he's going to stick his nose where it shouldn't be right now? And he's held on pretty well at the moment through six and seven. What about 8 and 9? Well, there's nowhere for him to stick the, stick the nose right now as Carfro losing time but still holding on. And dude, this, this might be a battle that he's just set himself up for over a few laps because he might have it when he comes out of the hairpin right now. Let's just see what line he takes. Wide. It's wide and then it's shallow. It's a lovely little swing back. He has lost a bit of time as Ferrier got on the, got on the blower faster. Don't think he'll be able to do anything, but they, they've been two for now matching each other in race pace so it'll be interesting to see but at the front the gap is point three of a second between blom and overguard lap 17 of 20 we've only got four to go yeah it, it, it it'll be it'll be interesting to see what uh, it'll be good to see what the t these two battles tell us essentially about the circuit because i have my own preconceptions about the circuit and it's pretty accurate to what you were saying which was it's pretty difficult to pass on the inroads. Your best, your, your your best position, or your best places to overtake are essentially where you can make the gap happen, and that gap basically happens when you are either <clears throat> coming up to a hairpin and there's a very slow car ahead of you. You can take the inside line and then get grab the racing line coming through the second part of the chicane. So that would be turn six and seven, which we just passed. And then into eight and nine but with a competitive car like we're seeing here between 38 and Kaitra and Blom and Overgaard it's just not gonna happen you're gonna have to make it happen either in this hairpin you're gonna have to dive 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 um, and hope and pray that it works because if it doesn't work you're sliding off in the end and you're losing a lot of time or you're sliding off the end you're hitting the guy that you're racing and you're both both your races are essentially compromised from that point on and it's a 30 minute race so if you have an accident it will be over yeah by the way just just keep an eye on the gt2s even bass has a one minute lead over blank and chip um with felipe's then about 20 seconds behind blank and chip that's the only thing going on at the moment uh they've just come by uh, even with a coming up to even Bass's Ferry and Carful shortly. Overguard and Blom has gone past him. Overguard has not had a good start to this lap, by the way. He's lost half a second and is only just on the slipstream of Blom. And that might help him. Okay, there's, there's two and a half laps to go. And he's actually he's losing time now. What has happened to Overguard? He is, he is, he's not been strong in this middle sector. But he's losing a lot of time right now. Uh, he's, he's not in danger of... of, a, of in a bat being put in a battle for third place at the moment. Ooh, he he's overcooked nowhere near it. He overcooked it going into the six, and then on the seven, his line was compromised. He overcooked it. You, you can see the line difference between himself and Liam Matthews. He was just not able to break hard enough or quickly enough to get down to speed to be able to take the turn in an effective way. Uh, Liam Matthews behind. Uh, sorry, that's not Liam Matthews behind it, but the uh, the um, DBR nine behind him basically was able to take a much neater line and again he's going very wide on the replay coming through the hairpin he's not looking very good as well Carfrol's done a little bit of a wide entry into the hairpin by the way in this battle against Feria and I think he wants to try and catch on the Feria it's a good thing Felipe has with no offense to him is damage because Feria does not get a lot of slipstream help there I, you know, I'm not trying to be biased to Carfrol I'm just saying it's nice if we have a natural battle here. They don't get the they don't get the assistance of slipstream. They'll be starting their lap 19 right now with two to go. The gap is point two, but still Carfrol cannot get the car there to make a move into turn one. And again, he goes a little bit wide. I like how he goes a little bit wide and then in. 
on these little like hairpin corners like the various the center and the hairpin but he does compromise his gap there coming in he's really gone Ooh. in hard there to try and catch up the ferry out and it's cost him and that'll be a slowdown as well that is not what you want to have happen to you when you are racing for fifth position the trees are in the way <laughs> no I love it when it replays. It's like, oh yeah, the trees. The trees, they exist. Anyways, this is... <clears throat> this is Richard Carthrock, car number six. Following the car number eight, Thomas Ferrier. This is how it transpired and how... Oh, you see that, yeah. He wasn't expecting... He was trying to keep the, up to the rear end as much as he could. And then when, uh, when the space ran out... His, uh, his brakes ran out too, so um, the brakes just slid and he slid off uh, and is now catching a gap behind him. Now, they're on their final lap just now. Amir Blom has a 1.8 second lead over the kind of one, Stefan Overgaard. And um, Ferrier has a nice almost three second gap to Richard Carthrow behind him. The next battle down the field is Godefroy battling his teammate Jonathan Razanahora and the two of them are VEC teammates so um oh it's a I think it's a battle it's a three way, it's a three -way battle yes it's a, it's it a three way is... battle and I gotta say can you see the difference between the three of them because one of them doesn't have a wing mirror Razanahora has, Ooh, has so been in the stepping out he's just stepping out uh, the Senna S oh well Viraj Senna Car, turn number two and he was stepping out and he was, he was coming around that car does not look very stable he's sliding in and around he's not doing he's i don't think he's a happy camper in that car that car is not looking well he's not it's not looking pretty either it's carrying a good bit of damage on the rear end yeah the spot is damaged as well yeah. by the way and the merit blonde by the way is up the casino straight he's only got a couple corners left literally a couple corners it's a chicane at the end of the track he will say awa to the wall of champions because he'll take that wall home with him he is the champion today for the first broadcast race of the season for the fanatec gt1 Weezen celebrates he will take victory in the gt1 now what about radzanahora can he hold on he is holding on as much as he can good up he's not had a good time yeah good up is there up in front and yeah. with that damage to radzanahora he can't catch and yeah. i think that would be all she wrote oh, oh she wrote oh dear Oh dear, <laughs> I I do I, I do want to say though that they like they love this weaving they love the weaving. Well, when they celebrate, yeah, I, I mean. Well, I mean, oh, sorry, that was Razan Horror taking a kiss of the Wall of Champions. Uh, I didn't think he was meaning to do that, giving his teammate a friendly kiss. Uh, I I I know that I know they're French, but don't need to be literal French with the cars, but. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, good to see you and mwah, mwah, and yeah, 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 yeah. And that was sorry, that was Alexander Goodafroy having a having a last. Well, he crossed the line, so it didn't matter too, oh, they too have, much. Oh, they're, they're, they're having some argy bargy at top and Razan Ahura, or as the Americans say, "Oh, they get ready to get out the car and have a." <laughs> no, no, they're uh, they're just having a bit of fun. The VEC guys are doing what the VEC guys love to do. Which is have a little bit of a procession, uh, and I think there's still a couple of cars left to finish, isn't it? Or yeah, is Ethan, Bass, Ethan, Ethan Bass has to go around again. He's the only one that has to go around. Yeah. Oh, well, there's a couple of us as well, Kiloski and Ali, but uh, we know Ethan Bass has won the race. By the way, he's got 50 seconds to get around. Yeah. Here. Every, well, I mean, he has won the race. Every other four has parked the car. <laughs> so, as the VEC guys do their little, uh, as they always do. A little procession. We, we shall just uh, run over the finish results of Merrick Blom winning the race a second and a half ahead of Stefan Overgaard, followed by Liam Matthews uh, and then Leonardo Marquez. And, oh, hello. Ethan Bass is going to the pit. Oh, he, he already did finish. Okay. Did I thought I didn't know yeah. he did. I didn't know he finished. Unless he just realised that he doesn't need to do anything, he just go into the pits. But as, as I was saying, Blom, Overgaard, Matthews is your top three. Leonardo Marquez uh, is into fourth. Thomas Ferrier takes fifth with that little battle with Carfro at the end there. A bit of a shame for Carfro. He finishes sixth. Anthony Fromont comes into seventh. Then Jeremy Hope 
uh, recovered to eighth, uh, went down the order, came back up, was coming back up, had that accident. Razan Ahura finishes ninth. Gudafroy finishes tenth. Morian comes home in eleventh. Rife Muller in twelfth. Uh, Stefan Leslie comes home in thirteenth, made up eight spots, and then Juan Franz. Uh, Jean Francis Arsenault came 14th. Nicholas Roy 15th. Stefan Walkup finishes 16th. Ryan Ingle 17th. Roman Blorgi 18th. Alan Marguen 19th. David Henri 20th. Brian Williams 21st. Jack uh, Kiligowski 22nd. Gazeski Ali 23rd. And then we come into the lap cars. David Hudson 24th. And then in GT2, it is Ethan Bass finishing pole position. Well done to him. Nice, clean, easy race for him. Uh, Paleo was a lap down. Blankenship was a lap down. Philippi was a lap down. Stanbridge, of course, we saw he had his retirement, which was extremely odd because he only had a small spin. He didn't hit anything. I really thought it was like, well, I thought he was just towing to, you know, escape not getting hit. Well, no, he told, and then just ejected from the from the race session. But as but as as it be, as it be, vis a vis. Dan Muller eight laps down. He retired. Devoe also retired. Munier is a retiree. Viana, we saw what happened to him. Gonzalez, we did not report on this. He retired as well, and he was the first person to retire seventeen laps ago. Yep, sorry. Uh, you're after a driver of the day. Should we I have am. a driver of the day? Yeah, let's have a driver of the day. Hmm. You know, it's, a, it's a tough one. I'm not exactly sure who, who to go for. I mean, Blom and Overguard just were basically out on their own. Uh, you know, if you're gonna give it, you can't give it to one of them, you've got to give it to both of them. Uh, let's talk about these guys that made up a lot of space, uh, a lot of places, though. Anthony Fromont made up three. Uh, Thomas Ferrier made up, I mean, he made up six, sorry. Richard Carfrell made up six. But I think, you know what? Thomas Ferrier comes home in fifth, making up six spots. And I think, really, that is a driver of the day when you think he is third overall when it comes to Corvettes. But making up six places around here is, especially with how big the field is, quite an achievement. I think he's my driver of the day. I'll give that I'll give that to him. Well, if if we're in agreement that it, he is the, yeah. man, the man of the day, the man of the error. Definitely. See Do it. Where is <laughs> where is the boy himself, Ferrier? Come on down. And there he is. You can just see his car there. Driver of the day will be Thomas Ferrier of the car number eight. Fixed. Uh, the, it, it it's the it's the French guys. <laughs> well, one of the one of the French teams anyway. I noticed this as well. This as well. The French love the GT ones. They just love the GT ones. Well, I mean, it, it's perfect time to remind you that, you know, we are looking today at the end of Le Mans. So, you know, uh, these GT1s did go around Le Mans for a while. Uh, hence why, you know, they're GT cars. Uh, they're, you know, the GT1s and the gt two. So, I can see the love, really, when you think about it. It's kind of like the old days of French racing. Do you see what I mean? Because... You know, if, you, if you're a French motorsport fan, you know about Le Mans. So, a lot of these guys probably would have grown up watching these cars at Le Mans. So, yeah, it, it makes sense that they love it. And it's fantastic seeing it. And, you know, you, you look up to the start of the race and you see a lot of region French. And it's like, wow, that, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. And it is just that, it is that same thing with the French communities. When they get to a game, the, the, the French just make like a, I used to call it like an underground scene. The French had an underground scene when I used to do uh, esports with Team Fortress 2 and stuff. And that they really do have like their own little division of esports. And it's fantastic to see. Yeah, I have seen that phenomenon once or twice before. but And, and in both occasions, they were French. But uh, it's interesting to see how the, how how they uh, they carve out their way in, in a community or such like or in a game even. But... We're gonna carve our way out of the uh, out of out of the uh, broadcast for now because it is the end of the race and we will need to uh, say our goodbyes. So I'll do the shilling this time. <laughs> wow, you're gonna do it for change. I, I know it's 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 it's, it's strange. 
If you like what you see, guys, consider giving us a subscribe on YouTube, a follow on Twitch, like our videos, uh, join our Discord in the descriptions. If you consider giving us a small donation, it helps. Um, it's in the description of YouTube, I think. If you join our Discord, there's a link there as well. Consider throwing a few coins our way. Um, I thank you guys to... There actually have been a few guys that have already done it. So I very much appreciate the people that have already done it. A million thanks. It goes back into the channel. Helps offset the costs of the hardware that um, I've already purchased for, for Rally on TV. And hopefully that we can expand the hardware assets in the future. And it also helps um, that you guys continue to watch our stuff and like our stuff. Uh, but until next week... Uh, I'm Robert O'Brien. This is D -d 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 -c Craig. Oh, sorry. I I'm Craig King. <laughs> I thought you were just gonna say I'm Rob O'Brien. He's Craig King, and I thought that was it. I uh, like um like the two Ronnies would do. Oh, and it's goodbye from him. And it's goodbye from me. <laughs> 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 I thought you were going to finish there. No, you hang up. <laughs> uh, Professional. Professionals. Professional. Professionals. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Monday blues tomorrow, but we'll be back on Friday and Sunday for your daily or, your, well, your weekly dose of shenanigans and such like. Until then, do take care, guys, and do enjoy yourselves.